<laughs> what do you think of uh, boosters? Will this increase efficacy against, for example, the Delta variant? Well, that's what we're actually pursuing. And the good news is we're in a phase one, two, three trial right now. And we've decided to go into the heart of the storm, where, you know, obviously the initial variant, now the Delta variant, and soon the Lambda variant. And this inevitability of the virus is changing against antibodies means that you need both an antibody and a T cell. So I'm excited to tell you that uh, we've launched a phase one, two, three trial in South Africa against and boosting both the Johnson & Johnson and the Pfizer vaccine. And um, the first patients will probably be injected or jabbed this week. Now, I felt pretty good with the fact that I got double vaccinated by the time the summer started. But, of course, Delta is a different challenge. So when we think about the booster shots, I had a sobering conversation on, a, on another show uh, yesterday with someone from the space and basically said they're not sure that a third mRNA shot is the ticket here, that it's going to have to be something else uh, in the therapeutic space, a different way of going at it. Is this sort of the point that we're entering now in the pandemic? Well, I've been, you know, screaming at the top of my lungs for the last year that just trying to block the virus with an antibody is insufficient. You have to actually kill or clear the infected cell, not only to prevent transmission, but to actually give you long-term immunity. And the innards of the virus called the nucleocapsid is what we've actually done. And, and um, I'm excited to say that our preclinical data um, show that, in fact, we protect all the way, all the way to the Delta variant. So, I think the combination of a antibody vaccine and a T cell vaccine is going to be the answer. Why doesn't the FDA fully approve the COVID-19 vaccines out there? We've got so many people who are hesitant to take the vaccine. A lot of them um, surely are concerned about, you know, because of misinformation um, that they've seen on social media. But others may be looking at the FDA and saying, I'm not going to take it until they approve it. Well, it's, you know, I think the issue with regard to vaccinology is really long-term immunity. So, you know, I, I can't speak to what the FDA's decision-making process is. But I do believe, first, that everybody should get the vaccine because it definitely reduces death risk. But we need to go to what I call now the second-generation vaccines. And as we said, Immunity Bio is now taking the approach that we will become the universal boost. I think long-term, we need to figure out an RNA and a DNA vaccine combination where the RNA looks as if it gives you the best antibodies and the DNA looks as if it gives you the best T cells. So if one can then create what we call a heterologous vaccine, but right now what we're doing, we're taking our DNA vaccine and at the Immunity Bio and making that the third booster, so to speak, of both the Johnson & Johnson and Pfizer vaccine in South Africa. To get people on board with this, is there a mind shift that's needed in the sense that for a while we were hopeful that this first round of vaccines, whether it was from Pfizer or Moderna, were the answer? Did they simply buy us time to get to other solutions, like the kind of things you're working on? Well, that's exactly what I was concerned about, right? I mean, this first vaccine, the first generation of antibody-based vaccines is really important because it actually would stop the death rate, reduce the, the, the load in the hospitals. But it doesn't really affect transmission. Um, meaning the ongoing pandemic. And what's worse, the transmission and those are unvaccinated, as you could see from the results, um, will continue this pandemic. And then if you add to, to that um, concept that the virus will just mutate against an antibody. So it's so important and so urgent that these next second generation vaccines now come to fall. Unfortunately, with the supply chain being sucked up by the first generation vaccine, we're in a sort of vicious circle where we can't produce enough at the second generation in order to enable this to come to the fore. And, and that's really where we are actually uh, at the Immune to Bio. So we've taken the position that we need to go country by country at a time. So we started in South Africa. I'm sure it's um, way down on your list of concerns, doctor, but you famously own a stake in the Lakers. And I just wonder what you think about fans being able to come to the games this year. Um, you've just added Russell Westbrook. In the off season, he's surely going to be a draw. But are, are people going to have to, um, you know, wear a mask while they watch? Well, even more so. You see, this is the other disconcerting fact. When you look at it, both scientifically and logically, uh, when we were concerned very early on, the very early stage of the pandemic, of what you call asymptomatic infections, that you would be asymptomatic and could spread. Um, 
Then all of a sudden, CDC said, wear masks. Guess what? When we get the vaccine or people get vaccinated versus those that are unvaccinated, and the person that's vaccinated that's uh, infected, this Delta variant actually has five to maybe a thousand times more viral load in your nose. So it'll only infect the unvaccinated. Um, and even those who are fully vaccinated, as you know, it's people that have what we call breakthrough infections. So the concept of now not wearing masks is really a little illogical. It's actually worse now than it was even in the beginning of the pandemic. So the well, answer unless, is you doctor, should... unless Doctor, unless you say, um, you know, players have to be vaccinated and you've got to be vaccinated to get tickets to come to the game. Vaccinated doesn't mean you're not going to be, uh, you don't prevent transmission. That's the whole point. No, I don't but, think you can But you're not going to end up that. in the hospital. You're not going to, you're not going to take yeah, a bed yeah. away from a cancer patient, you know? Yeah, but, but, yeah. but putting a mask on is not just for yourself. It's for your fellow man. So putting a mask on is prevent transmission to, to others so we can stop the cycle of pandemic, right, of infection. So no, look, I, I, I personally advocate masking when, you, when you're inside or outside. Um, it may be not be the, um, what's advocated in our country. Yep. I just think that's the wrong decision.